Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Beef and Barnsley channel. I'm Beef Stew and today we're going to be going through what balls you should take with you to nationals. This is going to be like our recommendations specifically for nationals, but you can use a lot of the things we explain in the video to build your own arsenal. Both me and Chris have been to nationals, so we've had a little bit of a chat about what worked for each of us and what didn't. And uh, I've kind of put together a video with ideally a six ball arsenal, but there are a few other options in there and I'll explain as the video goes on what your best options are. Okay, so to start off with, we're gonna look at which is gonna be the strongest ball in your bag. This is typically gonna be a solid asymmetrical bowling ball. Um, it's gonna be quite smooth and it's gonna be, like I said, the strongest, earliest rolling ball you have in your bag. I've got a couple of options here. I'm bowling on a 42 foot pattern to try and mimic some of the things you might see in nationals. We of course don't know what they've put on the lanes at nationals, but I just felt like I'd pick something that was a little longer just to give you an idea of what we could see. The first two balls that we're gonna look at are the Rotor Grip Gem and the 900 Global Reality. Um, see what you think of the, uh, of, the, of the shots that I throw. And um, when we get back, I'll break down what the advantages of each are and which one I liked and which one Chris liked. And they are. That's good. Come off it. Okay, so both of those look like pretty good options. For me, the pros and cons of both are the gem is much smoother than reality for me. I actually had the gem in box finish and the reality shiny, so that might have accounted for some of it. But in general, for me, the gem is a really smooth piece. I try to use it to create a little bit more hold rather than opening my angle up. So as you can see, the gem is the smoother of the two. Now, the reality does have polish on it, but I don't think that made as much difference as you would think it would. The gem is definitely the smoother of the two balls. And really when you're using the gem, you're looking to create more hold rather than miss right. Because with how smooth and slow the reaction is, that's where it really shines. The reality on the other hand, I feel is a little more versatile and I can open my angle up a little bit more, which is what I prefer to do. Both me and Chris like both of these balls, but for nationals, I had a lot of success with the reality, especially in team, and Chris had the opposite and a lot of success with the gem, specifically in the singles and doubles. Now you could take both of these balls if you were taking more than six balls, but in a six ball arsenal, I'd kind of recommend only having one of these two balls because I feel like if the lanes play a little bit drier for you or you don't have as much ball speed, you might end up in a situation where neither of these balls are in play. Okay, next up we have the benchmark type ball. The, um, for me, it's either the phase two or the Zen Soul. Now this is definitely a gap where I feel like those two balls are uh, separated enough that you could take both. 
but this is going to be the step down from your reality or your gem. Um, typically, this is the ball that's going to get the most use um, in an arsenal. Let's see what they look like and uh, let me know what you think. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer the Phase 2 or do you prefer the Zen Soul? Okay, as you saw by the video, the Phase 2 was a little bit stronger. Um, I think typically you're going to see that the Phase 2 is probably a little bit more continuous. I think that the Zen Soul is maybe a little sharper in general for most people. I like both of these options, and in a six-ball arsenal, I'd, I'd seriously consider both because I think that they can play off each other quite well, especially if you change the surface on, say, the Zen, have the Zen Soul shiny and have the face two and box finish, I feel like you can separate those balls pretty well and you've got a nice one-two punch. Next up is gonna be what we look at as kind of our strong, uh, quicker bowling ball. Uh, the two options I've got for this are the Zen and the X2. The Zen uh, is the symmetrical option, the X2 is the asymmetrical option. Uh, both for me are uh, Kind of similar overall strength. I would say the Zen's probably a little stronger. Let's see what they look like out on the lanes. Okay, as you could see, the Zen definitely was the stronger of the two balls. With it being symmetrical, I feel like you get a little bit more rounded, continuous shape. The asymmetrical ball tends to be uh, um, a little more forward after it makes its move. That's just kind of the way it is with the, having the stronger weight block in it. But the cleaner cover on the X2, I feel like makes it a little more violent overall. Um, it really depends which shape you like. I find the symmetrical ball to be a little bit more versatile for playing different parts of the lane, but definitely when the asymmetrical ball is right, I feel like that's how you can get a lot of score. Asymmetrical balls, when they're right, really are right. It's just they're not quite as versatile uh, to play slightly different shapes. Last but not least is the weakest ball in your bag. For me, it's going to be a ball that I feel I can really get left and play a lot of angle with. I think in the Storm, Rotogrip and Global lines right now, there's one obvious candidate, and for me, that's the High Road Pearl. Um, let's see what it does, and uh, let me know, do you like this shape? Uh, do, do you love playing the big hook? Um, have you got a High Road Pearl?
as you can see, I could get left with that ball and create a lot of angle. The thing is, with the cover being so clean, I feel like you can use slower speed and really open your angle up. And like late on in the block, in, uh, in the singles and doubles specifically, you can get left and, and really open up the pattern. For me, this is the ball that I used in uh, the end of doubles and singles. Um, I actually ran out of space in the end. Um, I was in an atypical situation though. I bowled on the lanes with AJ Chapman and we really broke the lanes down very quickly. So I actually got a long way left, much quicker than I would have liked to have done. My transitions in the singles and doubles were, I started off doubles trying to play kind of straighter like Chris had done with a gem, but I felt like the carry down that was created by AJ's purple hammer kind of forced me out of that. And I made a couple of steps before I got into the high road pull. And once I got into the high road pull, I just kept chasing it left. Unfortunately for me, after starting with two 279s in singles, I kind of ran out of space. And by the end, I'd, the lanes were pretty cliffed and a couple of bad shots cost me uh, that last game. Well, I hope this video has given you guys some ideas of what you can uh, fit together for an arsenal for nationals. If I was doing it, my six ball arsenal would of course be number one, the spare ball. Number two, as the strong ball, I would take the reality. Then I think that I would take the two, uh, the two benchmark balls, the Zen Soul and the Phase 2, to make me up to four. I would then add the Zen and the High Road Pearl. The only difference for me with the surfaces would be I would take both my reality and the Zen Soul and I would add some polish to them because I think that there's enough hook at Nationals this year that you don't really need those big surfaces. I think that like a lot of surface ends up creating um, a, a really slow reaction down lane because the ball just bleeds too much energy in the front part of the lane. Thanks again for watching. We'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos like this. But until next time, keep bowling well and uh, we hope to see you at the next video.